LWO on WeatherNet. Uh, lift off conditions looking pretty good. ATS is ready for launch. Ignition. Lift off. Falcon 9 has cleared the tower. Nine, eight. Side booster ignition. Six, five, four, three, two, one. On your screen is a live view of Falcon 9 awaiting its 6.11 p.m. Eastern Time launch from Space Launch Complex 40 at Cape Canaveral Space Force Station. Good evening and welcome to our launch coverage of Cosmos Sky Med's second generation FM2 for our customer, Talis Alenia Space. My name is Jesse Anderson and I'm a production and engineering manager for Falcon here at SpaceX and coming to you today from our SpaceX headquarters in Hawthorne, California. Our payload today, Cosmos SkyMed, is the first Earth observation constellation of satellites operated for both civilian and military purposes to help monitor the environment, including the prevention and management of natural disasters. It's an Italian satellite constellation owned by the Italian Space Agency and Ministry of Defense. We'll have more on the capabilities of Cosmos SkyMed a bit later in the webcast. Now, for those of you following along, you'll know that we had to stand down from our initial attempt yesterday due to unfavorable weather. Now, unfortunately, today is not looking much better as we are currently in violation of the thick cloud layer rule and are red on the range. But we are hopeful that weather conditions will improve over the next few minutes for liftoff today. For now, let's take a moment and get a little bit more familiar with that Falcon 9 rocket that you see on your screen. Our two-stage liquid-fueled launch vehicle stands 70 meters tall, which is equivalent to the wingspan of a 747 jet. Now, like many of our missions these days, the booster supporting today's flight is flying for the third time, having previously supported two Falcon Heavy missions in 2019, and that was STP-2 and ArabSat-6A missions. There are three main parts of the rocket visible on your screen, and that's the first stage, second stage, and the satellite fairing. The bottom two-thirds of the vehicle are what we call the first stage, and this is the portion of the vehicle that is covered with soot from its previous flights. Now, last year, 29 of our 31 launches were flown on flight-proven first stages, or in other words, over 90% of our launches last year were on first stages that had flown before. The first stage's primary role is to accelerate all the way to the edge of space with the help of its nine Merlin, one and Merlin M1D engines. And then there, it will drop off the second stage, which has the payload attached. Now, the first stage will then make its way back to Earth, where we will attempt to recover it back on land today at landing zone one. And you can see that landing zone on your screen there. Now, if you turn your attention to the section above stage one and that black carbon fiber interstage, you'll see Falcon 9's second stage. About two and a half minutes into flight, the stages will separate and the second stage will ignite its sing single Merlin vacuum engine to carry itself in the Cosmos SkyMed satellite to a polar sun synchronous orbit. Now, the satellite is safely enclosed inside of the payload fairing, which is what you're seeing on your screen. That's that large nose cone at the very top of the rocket. Our fairing is about 40 feet tall and a, with a 17-foot diameter. Now, to put that size into perspective, an average fire truck is about 40 feet long and 12 feet wide, so it would just fill the fairing. As for payload mass, Falcon 9 is capable of carrying about 50,000 pounds to low Earth orbit. Now, a fire truck is a good analogy for this as well because it can weigh about just that when it's filled with water and people. Today, our Cosmos SkyMed payload is about 5,000 pounds, or 10% of Falcon 9's total capacity. The fairing halves we are using today are flight proven, and we'll be attempting to recover them once again uh, when they make their way back to Earth. Now we're just under the T minus 12 minute mark until liftoff. The Falcon 9 team began their final checks at T minus two hours. And most recently we completed the ground team pull to proceed with propellant load and launch at T minus 38 minutes. 
where we begin prop loading at T minus 35 minutes. And Falcon 9 is a bipropellant vehicle, and that means that we use two propellants, and that's a fuel and an oxidizer. So for Falcon 9, we use a refined form of kerosene, or RP1, or rocket propellant one for our, our fuel. And then to burn the fuel, we need an oxidizer. Falcon 9's oxidizer is super chilled liquid oxygen, or what we call densified LOX. And that is chilled well below its boiling point, which increases its density, and that allows us to load more into the first and second stage LOX tanks. Now, currently, fuel loading is complete on the second stage, while loading continues on the first stage until about T minus six minutes. Liquid oxygen is loading on both first and second stages as we speak. Now, when it's fully fueled, Falcon 9's first and second stage combine to carry over 1.1 million pounds of propellant. And we'll burn through most of that over the eight and a half minutes that it takes to land the first stage and get the second stage into its initial orbit. Now, we also need an igniter to start burning the fuel and oxidizer. And for that, we use the chemical TTEB, or triethyl aluminum and triethyl borane. Uh, it produces a characteristic green flash that we can sometimes see at the base of the rocket. So you can look out for that at T minus two seconds right before liftoff. Now, once our Merlin engines ignite, they'll begin throwing the combustion exhaust out of the engine nozzles at the base of the rocket, resulting in a push on the vehicle in the opposite direction. Now, this is a great example of Newton's third law of motion. For every action, there is an equal and opposite reaction. Now, again, as for weather, we are keeping an eye on this. Uh, we are still currently red on the range and no go for launch at this moment. But we are hopeful that weather conditions will improve over the next few minutes uh, for a liftoff at 6, 6, 11 p.m. Eastern time. Now, as I mentioned earlier, our mission today is for Cosmo SkyMed second generation FM2 for our customer Talis Alenia Space. The Constellation is owned by the Italian Space Agency and Ministry of Defense. The dual purpose network is composed of four identical satellites of the first generation, launched in orbit between 2007 and 2010, which will gradually repla be replaced by the second generation ones and improving efficiency and capability in key areas such as nation security and planetary preservation. The first satellite of the second generation was launched in 2019 and today will be the second second generation satellite to launch. To help us better understand the capabilities of the Cosmo SkyMed constellation, here's an explanation from the Italian Space Agency's president and head of programs directorate. The Cosmo SkyMed second generation is a constellation of four satellites equipped with the synthetic aperture payload able to acquire images in any part of the Earth's surface with an unprecedented resolution and image quality. The Cosmos Climate satellites, like the optical systems, are able to operate during the night and in presence of clouds. This is thanks to the specific frequency used for the acquisition. The antenna is uh, totally new and is able to acquire simultaneously images at a very big distance between them. And the data acquired contain a lot of new information with respect to the past generation. For the better use of the satellites and the exploitation of data, we have developed a new control center and processing center in Italy. This will enable the development of new science and new services applications for the benefit of citizens, institutions and entrepreneurs. The Cosmos SkyMed constellation is not only a very uh, important technical instrument in the field of Earth observation, but it is also an important uh, support to the strategy of Italy to international collaboration. Thanks to Cosmos SkyMed over the years, and even more will be in the future with the enlargement of the constellation, we can establish uh, collaboration with other countries to share the use of data provided by the constellation and to enlarge the coverage of the planet with other instruments offered by, by partners. I'm talking about so far, for example, Argentina, we plan in the future to do collaboration with Israel, and so on. Also very important is the fact that we use Cosmos SkyMed as third-party contributor to the Copernicus uh, program of the European Space Agency and the European Union. 
In this way, we offer important strategic and uh, precious data to collect with our constellation, also to other partners, to other producers of data for the benefit of Europe and, uh, and the rest of the world. You may have noticed that the clock has stopped. Uh, that is because we have had a hold on the countdown due to poor weather conditions. Leading up to launch, there was a strong cold front approaching Florida and some click uh, thick layered cloudiness in the area. Now, when we started the webcast, we were red on the range in violation of the thick cloud rule. We were hopeful that weather conditions were going to improve for liftoff, but unfortunately, we are standing down from today's attempt. The vehicle and the payload remain in good health, and our next launch opportunity is tomorrow at 6 11 p.m. Eastern Time. As always, thanks for watching, and we'll see you again soon.